الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين that is the praises to Allah the praise to Allah the God of the Revolver the Cheshire and sustain of all the worlds Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in amma ba that is concerning after as i indicated before the format that i was taught was that we exalt Allah and then we send the salutations upon the noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I have separated myself from those two entities that has caused us to be Muslims here today and we thank Allah for the invitation and we thank Allah that we had the spirit to accept it after having investigated something about this way of life and we are inshallah convinced that it is the way of life that God has ordained for us and for the whole creation really when we understand and I like to tell people all the time you probably heard me say it the uh, sun is a Muslim the sky is a Muslim everything is a Muslim from inception or from birth so to speak and we the human beings and the jinn from what we know of are the only creatures that have the tendency or the uh, latent ability to go off from the original nature that uh, we were uh, put in. And we as human beings, we have the ability, unfortunately, to change the nature of some of the animals, you know, and get them to uh, run through fire hoops and uh, do other things that is not in accord with their natural nature and their natural uh, uh, habitat, what they do in their own environment where they're left to be wild and free. So we thank Allah that he's given us a deen, a way of life that will help us to uh, stay as close as we can to the original nature that he put us in coming out of the wombs of our mothers. Praise be to Allah. So last week um, I mentioned uh, the uh, mystical letters prefacing uh, Surah 40, El Ghafur, or El Ghafir, which is the partner, the one who forgives again and again, right? And in my haste, I didn't mention the, uh, the fact that um, there are seven surahs from 40 all the way through 46 that commences with those two letters, ha, with a little air coming out, and meme, all right? And I've said over and over again that uh, some will say these are mystical letters and you can't be dogmatic as to what they mean and what they represent. And you'll find on page 1203, if you, you have to write this down, on page 1203, you have some comments about these letters from Yusuf Ali and his translation. And I have mentioned to you, as I have said more than once, that if you would count up all of the H's, all of the Ha's, if you will, and all of the means, which is an M, in those seven surahs, separately, you can do it separately, or you can do it and combine all seven of, of the uh, scores and count up the, the H's and the M's. And divide it by 19, it comes out even. And that's proof, it should be, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he could not have done that. He going to pick just seven scores and give you uh, this uh, numerical exactness. If you really really focus and think about that, you would say this book has to have come from Allah. And there's other proofs too, because he's telling Muhammad about what happened thousands of years before him. And how could he know these things about the odd and the that mood and and uh, fear alms time, you know? So the more and more you and I read the Quran, we hope that the more and more we will become convinced that it is from Allah. Praise be to Allah. So I encourage you to go to page 1203 of the uh, Yusuf Ali translation and you'll see what he says about it. And then if you want to check out the uh, number of H's and M's in those sewers, just go in there one day when you get a chance. If you don't believe me, count them up. But an uh, even more simpler way is to uh, go to the internet 
in Google the word, uh, the numerical code of the Quran, and there are two books that are there as a PDF. I got them on my uh, computer now. That's telling you all about this association with the 19 in the various surahs that begin with these letters. Like we have one real quickly. Call. That's the Q, right? That's uh, in the surah 50. You can count those up. There's 57 <coughs> Qs, if you will, in that particular surah. And uh, 19 times 3 is 57, right? So if it's exact. And it, that pattern that I'm talking about has to do with all of those surahs in the Quran that commences with letters. Okay, so I'll leave it at that. So I speak to you today from the uh, Surah 69, where Allah reveals, al haqatu mal haqatu wa ma adraka mal haqatu The reality is translated by some. It's translated by another person. The lame bearer of the truth. Some translate it as the inevitable reality. Hot means truth, right? And you hear people say all the time, that's the hot, man. <laughs> that's the hot, H-A-Q-Q, -Q, right? And Yusuf Ali translates it as the sure reality. Uh, another brother, Muhammad Shaka, translated it as the sure calamity, which I would say is not a, a good translation because calamity means something real bad, right? On that day, it's going to be bad for some <laughs> and good for some. You know, in fact, Allah tells us in the Quran that those who uh, have their book in their right hand, they will read it and they will be full of bliss and joy. And those who get their book in the left hand, they don't even want to read it. <laughs> it says right there in that Surah 69 that they don't want to read it because they know what they did, you see. And they were shocked at the final judgment because so many times we have a tendency to say, oh, we know this is a loving God. He's, he's going to give me a break on the day of judgment. Or I'm going to have a, an intercessor to, to fend for me. And sometimes we have that kind of mind. And a lot of it comes from a Christian past, you know. But in the Quran, there's no ayah in the Quran that indicates to you or I that God is going to come and uh, allow, I should say, an intercessor like Muhammad saying, give, give Sadiq a break, mm -hmm. you know. Allah says, on the day of judgment, every soul shall come up struggling for itself. This is in the Surah 16, 111 that I'm referring to now in English translation. One day every soul will come up struggling for itself and every soul will be recompensed fully for all of its actions and none will be dealt with unjustly in the least. Praise be to Allah. So this is very important for us to have in our mind that uh, I'm on my own. I got to keep my morals straight, and I can't expect my mama, my daddy, or anybody to uh, give me a break before Allah when my record is tainted to the to the negative, as opposed to your record being pushed to the to the right side in terms of you having more percentage of good deeds than bad deeds. So later on in the uh, clip, I'm going to mention the the surah of Qariyat to some degree. So continuing on, so many times people say, why is it that Allah is talking about the judgment all the time? You got a surah called El Waqiyah, right? He got a surah called uh, El Gashiyah. He got uh, a surah called El Zalzala, the earthquake, you know, trying to remind us over and over again, if you all don't do right, you may have a very, very rude awakening when the judgment day occurs. So God is encouraging us over and over again, do right, do right, human beings. You will have gardens and midst where rivers flow if you do, you know? Praise be to Allah. So this Surah 69, after it mentions those three eyes that I mentioned to you, the reality, and what is the reality, trying to say it, and what will explain to you, why may I draw and what will explain to you what this is? 
So I always like to tell people, and I'm very confident in saying this, that we know that Allah is a professional doer of everything that he does, and he didn't fail <laughs> to explain it to us in this particular surah. He didn't fail. So the question is, are we going to go into it and then read it and then come to the end and say, oh, I know what it is, you know? But Allah is very, very rhetorical. After he tells you this, what we'll explain to you, he gives you a long spill, a long one, on how he did the, the odd and the that mood, how he uh, overthrew the, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And how he uh, punished Fir Aun and his imps, you know? He's giving us all of this, you know? And then in the latter part of the sewer, he's telling you and I exactly what it is. So, I'm going from sewer 6938, I'm just going to read the English to expect time. So I do call to witness, Allah says, what you see and what you don't, do not see, that verily this is the word of an honored messenger. He's speaking of the angel Jibril giving this message to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he's constantly lauding, lifting up the Quran, right? Lifting it up over and over again in the Quran. It's not boasting, it's letting you know that, man, this is something that you should read and, and, and cook it into your heart and in your life activity. And then he tells you that they couldn't produce even ten, ten sewers like this. Call all of your people together who call themselves great poets and all that. See if they can reproduce something like this. And you can't do it. Allah lets you know you will never be able to do it. Pray be to Allah. And then he goes on to say, this is not the word of a poet. Literally as you believe, nor is it the word of a soothsayer. A soothsayer is somebody who uh, can foretell future events. So Muhammad, he, 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 he's not the one who knows what the future is going to bring, right? He says, if I had my way, the prophet said, no evil would have affected me at all. But we know that Muhammad went through a lot of stuff. Had an arrow shot into his shoulder, I believe it was. Had a Jewish woman to poison him. Um, had, uh, I believe, his uncle Abu Jal. The father of ignorance, they gave him that name, Abu Jal, the father of ignorance, said that he took uh, the uterus of a sheep, Prophet Muhammad cooling out, getting the rest, right? And he throws it past some, some, some people who he had control over, or whatever, to throw this uterus of the sheep down in there where Muhammad was sleeping. Things like this, you know? He went to Taif, as you know, and uh, the boys and girls of the town were incited to throw rocks at him, right? And it said that when he came out of there, in the historical report, that his sandals were full of blood and you could hear the screeching noise in his sandals as he came up out of type, you know? So we see that he did not have, you know, control of the future. You would imagine if, if he wanted to control the future, I don't want to get thrown at or, or getting uh, uh, poisoned and all of that, you know? So Allah is letting you and I know that he is the one that has control over all events. And it says, little admonition it is that you all receive. He's condemning a lot of the rejectors of faith in this particular section of the Surah 69. And then it goes on to say to us, Tanzilum mirabbil alameen. This is a message sent down from the Lord of all the worlds. So he's telling you about the, the seriality, and now in the latter part of the Surah, He's telling you how you and I can be in good shape when that sure reality of Judgment Day occurs. So he's pushing hard in the style and the wording to get you and I to believe that this is from him and it will save you, it will save us. And if the messenger, speaking of Muhammad, if the messenger were to fabricate or invent or lie and say that, that I said something that is a lie or revealed to him something that I didn't reveal to him, Allah tells you and I what he would have done to Muhammad. 
He said, and we, for me, I'm sorry, la akazna men who build, men who, pardon me, build the yami. We should have certainly seized him, right, by the right hand. This is in the source 69. No, he's telling you that if Muhammad just had the idea that he wanted to come to you all and say, yeah, Allah revealed to me such a, <laughs> before he could even utter that, Allah said, I would have stopped him up immediately from such action, right? Seized him by the right hand. And then he tells us what he would have done to him after doing that. And we would have certainly cut off the artery of his heart. They call it the aorta, right? The, the, the big, you know, vessel that, that funds the, 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 the blood into the heart and moves it around the body and all that. So he would have cut that off. And if you get somebody to cut that off, you go <laughs> immediately, you know. And it, it's no time period of hospice and all of that, right? You gone right there. Allah said, if the prophet would have done that, I would have done the uh, killing of him, the destruction of him. I would have snatched his life out of him immediately. So what is that telling us clearly? That Muhammad didn't do that. <laughs> because he lived for many years. <laughs> so you should know that this book is directly from Allah, and Allah has complete control of everything at all times. And he says more than once. Wallahu ala kulli shayin kadir, right? And on Allah has power, oh, Allah, pardon me, and Allah has power over all things at all times. You should remember that, at all times. Not just intervening with this power, but this power is consistent. He knows when the earthquake is going to occur. He knows when the tornado is going to occur. He knows when I'm going to die. He knows when you're going to die, you see? So Allah has come. Complete control. He's El Khadir, right? The one who gives the measure of things. And as a result of giving the measure and the ingredients of things, he knows the potentialities of that thing. And he has the ability to, to uh, pardon me, ability to control that thing. Just like if you make a robot. You know what that robot is going to do. So many things that the robot is going to do because you program them into a particular activity, right? So we should see ourselves as robots of Allah, but we really don't know that we are <laughs> a lot of times. But we really are, you know. <laughs> no, so Allah know what I'm going to say before I say it, you know. And Allah has a video recorder of everything. He has an audio recorder of everything, in a sense. Not putting him in the human plane, but we know that Allah says he's El Basir. He needs as Sami, the one who hears everything, you see. So we should see Allah as being perfect in every way in all of the attributes that he has given us. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. So then after he says that he would have cut off the arty of his heart, he revealed Fama Minkum Min Ahadin Anhu Hajizin nor can any of you all withhold him from my wrath. In other words, if you wanted to try to stop me from taking the prophet out, y'all couldn't do it. If all of y'all gathered to try to do it, y'all couldn't stop Allah taking the man out, right? That's clear what Allah's indicating. It's not any uh, hard thing to understand in English or Arabic, right? And then he goes on. In Nahu, the Tavkira Tun, pardon me, the Tun. And surely, surely, this is a message for the El Muttaqin, those who have reverence for God, who wants to uh, be obedient to God. Allah is telling you, this is the message for you. And it's really for those who, who disbelieve. Allah is still trying to work on them with this Quran, too. But it's more so for us, because some people are just going to be rejectors, and they're going to reject to the day they die, you know. And then Allah states that fact in the next ayah. Well, in na na lamu anna minkum mukadibin, and certainly we know this is Allah saying this, and certainly we know that there are amongst you those who reject it. 
So people say, well, who's this we? You know, we know that the we is the authoritative we, the kingly we. This is Allah talking, and it's not Muhammad saying it or, or any, any, anything that he doesn't have control of saying this. This is Allah himself saying this. And we send down rain from the sky, he reveals, right? So that means that I got the, uh, the, uh, the, the wind working with sending that rain down. I got the clouds. I got the lightning. I got all of this in my control causing this rain to come down. So that we is all of the agents that he created that's causing these things to happen. I hope that's, that, that's clear. Praise be to Allah. And continuing. Wa innahu la husratun ala kafirin. And this is explaining what those first three ayahs meant right here. But truly, revelation is a cause for the unbelievers to have sorrow. And then he gives us the real powerful punch in the next ayah. Well, in Nahu, using the word haq, the haqqul And surely, surely, it is truth, speaking of this Quran, of assured certainty. So you see how he's tying all of this in. The sure reality of judgment is coming. I've given you the Quran to save you from it. And know that this Quran is truth of assured certainty. Praise be to Allah. And concluding in the latter part of the ayah here, it says, فَسَبِّحْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَذِينَ So glorify the name of thy Lord the Most High. So, you know, sometimes people look at the word name and they think that God is commanding us in this ayah only to just maybe sit in a, in a, in a, in a circle and say, SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa lahu akbar. You know, some people think that this is what Allah is simply saying. But if you look at it, the context of it and where he places this particular command, you should know that God is saying that to glorify me, is to live the life that I want you to live. That's what glorifying God is. To, to work and make money and to uh, take care of your family, to bow your head in submission and do right. That's glorifying Allah. More so than me sitting all day long saying Allahu Akbar and don't make no money. <laughs> you know? And I say that because you have some people who will do that. They will spend hours and hours doing what they call it dhikr. I'm not against dhikr because it helps you focus on God. But Allah says, Adikullahu Akbar, and the remembrance of God is the greatest. So it means that the remembrance of God is the greatest where you're conscious of him everywhere you go and everything that you do, you know? So I hope that that, that is uh, something that you should remember, that the remembrance of God is in our actions more so than our words. Praise be to Allah. حديثنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الرحاب الله قاص نار هارس to swerve after you've guided us aright but bestow upon us mercy from your presence for surely you are the grandest of the givers Amen. Yeah, there's a um, tape. Out this called um, the purpose of life by uh, Khaled Yassin, and I distributed it to a lot of people, and I listened to it. And I think it's a classic tape. Again, the purpose of life. So right away, when I heard the title, I know what the purpose of life is. Allah tells us what the purpose of life is, doesn't He? He tells us the purpose of life is to do what? Worship Him. That's the purpose of our life to worship Him. But also, we have other skills and and and. Uh, things that we can do that we can see as being the worship of God. Becoming a great uh, roofer, fix people's roofs, and, and give them a fair price. <laughs> That's worshiping God, right? So all of what we do, if it's halal, and it's in accord with the Furqan, the Furqan is the do and don't list of the Quran, 
It's worship of God. If we're doing the right thing, that's worship of God. But our main thing is to have our moral self in good shape. And that's the worship of God. So when you and I put our foreheads to the floor, I mentioned this more than once, all of the blood in the brain comes and fills up this area right here. I read this in a book called uh, Sujud by uh, Dr. Ahmed Sakhar. Might be still on the market. He passed away now. Well, like we're in a paradise. So it says that all of the blood that's in your head here, your brain, all that, it fills up this area right here while you insert that. And we have what they call electrostatic energy in our brains. And what is electrostatic energy? Clearly, you, you, you felt the feeling where you're in a, in a situation where you pull a sweater off, a nice wool sweater or a packer or whatever it is. You, you feel all that crackling when you take the sweater off, right? That's electrostatic energy. And if you're in a dark room, you can see some sparks. If you're in a dark room, you can actually see some sparks, right? So he mentions to us that um, this uh, electrostatic energy, it fills the brain up. But when you go down here like that, it dissipates all that electrostatic energy. So you come up out of, of uh, Sajda, feel like you had a, had a brain shower or something. You feel, you feel better, you know, you feel like you had escaped this world and you got energy so you can do what you got to do, you know. So if you mix all that on a regular basis, you will find that it is a stimulator to your whole being and it's a renewal of your whole being in the sense that all that dis-ease that was in the brain has been moved out and you feel relaxed and cooled out. Praise be to Allah. And this happened so many times, I'm smiling now because I can remember how I might be dead tired. I said, I don't feel like making my Isha. I make my Isha and I stay up all night. <laughs> I have to make an Isha, you know. This is what I have been able to do. And I imagine some of you have experienced this too, you know. But a lot of times, we don't spend enough time doing things that we have as our goals and aspirations because we love that sleep. <laughs> we love it. I love it too, you know. Sometimes I get mad when the noise come up and I got to get up, you know. <laughs> I can remember getting a whipping when I was young because we got up too early in the morning. My dad was mad because he had to go to work. And he was, well, I told you I don't want no noise before so and so time. You know? We weren't making no salak. I wasn't a Muslim yet, you know. So I can remember that, you know. So because of that, when somebody is asleep, I try my best not to wake them up. My wife will tell you that. I don't like to wake people up when they sleep, you know, I, do, I just don't, you know. Praise be to Allah. So, I shall not do kind of minute now, right? Prayer is better than sleep, right? <laughs> Worship is better than sleep. But being, a, being awake and doing your business and all of that, that's better than sleep too. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. And I remember the phrase by uh, Ben Franklin, he said, uh, plow deep while the sluggards sleep. While the lazy people sleep, plow deep, like work hard. When all the people sleeping, you forge it on, you know, getting your plan together and, and doing what you need to do to fulfill your goal and your, your aspirations, whatever they might be. Praise be to Allah. So we are here to worship God. And we know that to whom much is given, as the Bible language says, much is required and expected. So you should have high goals for yourself. And Allah commands us to work in our places. So Allah wants us to be workers. He don't want us to sit around. We want to be workers in the physical sense, in the mental sense. And we want to be in the business of acquiring knowledge of all sciences. The Quran science, the science of uh, the, 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 the heavens, the science of electricity, uh, Carpentry, all of this, Allah wants us to engage ourselves in it, you see. So let us take a look at ourselves. Say, what is it that I have as a skill? What am I good at? Or if I'm not good at anything, I'm going to take up something where I can become good at it, you know. That's what we need to do, inshallah. Inshallah, we will do that, and we will uh, establish 
an umma here that will be akin or like the uh, umma of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in days of old. Praise be to Allah. So I'll be that's about all I have uh, other than to say to you, I know I don't have much time. There's another ayah in the Quran, or another series of ayahs where Allah again uses that style. It says, El Qariya, the day of noise and clamor. Mel Qariya, wa ma adraka mel Qariya, the day of noise and clamor. And what is the day of noise and clamor? And then Allah says, and what will explain to you all what this is? <laughs> and I believe, I've, I believe I know something about what it is from my study and research of it. But time won't permit me today. And I know that uh, i got to come do the by next week. And uh, some of you may have heard my spiel, if you will, on El Qadriya. And I would encourage you to, to listen to it. And, and if you don't register it, investigate behind me and see <laughs> if what I'm saying has any merit or any any truth to it you know a lot of times you know you get something from a lot you think and uh you stumble on some more proof you think you're stumbling but really a lot leading you to more proof but you think you're stumbling you know i didn't really have intention to find that as a dalil for, for my understanding of this you know things like that happens so uh, inshallah i'm going to talk about that uh another time and i close with uh, the last part of uh and what will explain to you what the day of judgment is? This is Allah again. What can I tell these people to get them to understand what this day of judgment is, you know? Then he says it again. Again, what will explain to you, if you the thum, what will explain to you what the day of judgment is? Then he tells us in the last part of it, it will be the day when no soul shall have power to do anything for one another, for itself or for one another, for the command that day will be completely with Allah. Love us on the day of judgment. You can't say nothing <laughs> like, well, I'm sorry and, you know, being regretful and all of that. The command would be Jannah or Jahannam, right? And back in the day, we used to say, uh, you get mad at somebody, we'd say, uh, go to 7734. <laughs> y'all know 7734? I might be too old for y'all to know that. Or that language may not be used right now. But look at 7734 and see if that, that, that's hell backwards. <laughs> 7734 and we don't want to go there <laughs> we definitely don't want to go there so Allah is beckoning us over and over again in the Quran do right, do right a terrible punishment is awaiting you if you don't, you know and we need to have more communal association so it can help us do right you know a lot of times when a person don't have money I gotta steal this, you know. I just don't have the money to pay for it, right? But you can imagine if all the Muslims came together and the money was better amongst us, some of that stealing and thievery would, would go away, you know. And I, I have to say to you, when I was a little boy, I was a, I was a little, little thief, you know. <laughs> I have to say, why I have five brothers and four sisters. We had to fight for the cookies, fight for the cake, and all of this, you know. Couldn't eat all of your feel what you wanted, you know. So, <laughs> I go to the store. <laughs> May Allah forgive me for such an act. But I'm just saying that to give you the point that sometimes the gravity of, of not having things, as Imam Muhammad said, overcoming the gravity of materialism is a hard thing to do. I know I don't have this, but I'm going to still maintain my, my good nature and don't be a, a thief or a stealer, you know, steal something, you know. So I would encourage you to see the advantages of us coming together and make some money together, <clears throat> inshallah. And I'm not here in the city, but I wish I was here in the city. I'm, li I'm living in Detroit, you know, so I come here just once a week. But if I was here, 
I was trying to find out what skill you got, man. What skill you got? Let's do this together. Let's do that together. If you got a roofing business, give me your cards. I'll see if I can get you some more business. Things like that is what Muslims should be about. What do they call it? Um, uh, I got the term they use, but they have a big gathering and then people just exchange cards and whatnot. You know, and they know, well, this person, if I need this or that, I call this person, so on and so forth. So I hope I said something of value to you today. And uh, may Allah have mercy on us all. And uh, when we leave here, grant us uh, the Jannah. Rabbana Afrik Alayhi Sabran, but Tabida Damana, one sooner Allah, Allah will call me Kafirin. Allah pour down upon us patience and constancy and make firm our feet and help us against the rejection of faith from within and outside of ourselves. Amen. Uh,